Austin Hill, the man in the draft. So good when it comes to this style of racing. He's got confidence. He's got momentum. This is his home track. And he's rolling from the front row today. Brad, let's talk to him. Let's check in. How about it, Austin Hill, Brad Keselowski in the Fox booth. And that I want to check in. You got us? Yes, sir. I got you. Great. Good to hear your voice, man. You're on a heater, bud. Three wins in Daytona. Come back to one of your favorite tracks here in Atlanta. We just got to know, what's it going to take for you to get it done? Well, that two car is pretty fast today, so uh, I think that having my teammate up here is going to be, you know, a big big part of controlling this race. I'm hoping that him and I can kind of do like we did in stage one uh, there at Daytona with our Benno Chevrolet, and, and, you know, we both stay out of all the carnage, the, you know, get damaged, that type of stuff, um, and just keep us all, all out front all day, control the race. Um, not sure how this thing's going to drive. The wind's whipping pretty hard, so uh, we got to be mindful of that. But we got a really fast Bennett Chevrolet here. It's as fast as it's the Internet. So, um, like I said, if we stay up front all day, we stay in front of the carnage, we'll have a, have a shot at here at the end when the, uh, the pay window opens. Absolutely, man. We've been putting on a heck of a show. We can't wait to watch you today. Good luck. Yeah, thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Sounds to me like Austin, Hull, uh, Austin Hill wants to control this race. Making his first front row start here at Atlanta is the driver from right here in Georgia. Alongside, as he said, his teammate Jesse Love, undefeated on pole day in NASCAR's Xfinity Series. First driver ever to win poles in his first two starts. Let's talk to him, Joey. All right, let's see if we can talk to Jesse Love. Jesse Love, Joey Logano up in the Fox booth. You got me? I got you. Hey, you uh, two poles right off the bat. You're doing pretty good at qualifying. What's your game plan as you head off into turn one with your teammate there and learning this new track at Atlanta here for you? I guess be aggressive as you are, right? We got to <laughs> make sure we can maximize our stage points early and, and keep that track position. So I'm going to be really aggressive and, and try to stay up front. I think our car is the best out front. It's going to handle the best out front. So. The wind's going to be whipping all day, and I know that my car is going to getting clean air, so I'm going to try to keep that. And when we do lose our track position, just methodically get up front. Absolutely. Cautiously aggressive is what we say sometimes. Good luck in there, man. Thank you. And now we look at our starting grid. We talk about those RCR drivers on the front row. Row two, the birthday boy, Riley Herps with John Hunter Nemechek, who won here last July. I'll tell you what, I'm looking at row three. Parker Kligren had a great shot of winning this race last fall, starting next to Sam Mayer in six. And you got Parker Kligerman there right next to him. Almost won this race here last year, along with Ryan Truex, AJ Allmendinger. I think that's one that's going to be pretty strong. We've seen those college cars work really well together on speedways. Sheldon Creed, not in the two car. Remember that this year. This is the one that we're all struggling with in the 18 car. Those Gibbs cars are fast, and Jug Isle, Justin Algott are always in position at the end of these races. Chandler Smith, Cole Custer. Cole Custer with a lot of experience, running a lot of cup races before, a lot of speedway experience. Look for him to be up there as well. Look at row seven. You got the rookie, Shane Van Gisbergen, impressive last week at Daytona. Alongside last year's rookie, Sammy Smith, who already has a win under his belt, did it a season ago at Phoenix. Oh, I love this row. Josh Williams, my man in Atlanta. Boy, he's got <laughs> the great stories. This guy's hilarious. Great race car driver, too. Doesn't get enough credit. Start next to Anthony Alfredo, ready to make a breakthrough. And then we got Brandon Jones and Kyle Weatherman. Brandon, obviously a great speedway racer. You can see him moving towards the front, but he's got to start in the back. Yeah, got to drop to the rear. Row 10, a couple of Fords. Haley Deegan, another one of our Rookie of the Year contenders, alongside the veteran, one of the five drivers entered from Georgia, Ryan Sieg. As you check out the rest of the starting lineup, we hear from our pit reporters. We start things off with Josh Sims. Good afternoon, Josh. You know, if you're looking for someone to steal the show from the 21 of Austin Hill, look no further than the 48 of Parker Kligerman. Top 10 finishes in both Atlanta races last year. And as the guys in the booth said, he nearly won the March race last year for work for contact with the 11 car coming to the checkers. Well, Parker told me he rewatched that race. He has an idea of what he would do different if put back in that scenario. Do not be surprised that the 48 comes away with his first win in the Xfinity Series later on today, Regan. Well, Josh, Atlanta marks the one-year anniversary of one of the craziest moves we've ever seen in the Xfinity Series. Josh Williams literally parked his car on the front stretch in the middle of the race. Think back to he had damage. NASCAR had said, we want you to put it in the garage. 
He put it right at the start finish line. What came from that? T-shirts for charity, all kinds of different things and notoriety for Josh based on that move. Fast forward one year, Josh is now with Colic Racing in what is an excellent opportunity for a driver that the team told me they believe can win and they love his humility and his humbleness as he's gotten into their race cars. Look for him today to go out there and try and park it in a different way, maybe with a checkered flag at the start finish line. How epic would it be one year later for him to go out and win <laughs> I would love it. At Atlanta, but you said it. Collie cars always really good here. Put a couple of cars in the top 10 both races a year ago. Williams rolling off from the 16th position. I guess if he were to win today, you would call it an upset ride. So let's look at some sleepers, some underdogs maybe that could deliver on the big stage. Jordan Anderson racing. So impressive when it comes to the draft. The boss man is here, Jeff Burton, who's won at Talladega. And of course, Parker Retzloff looking for his first career win. They got it done, as we said, a season ago, and they were great last week at Daytona. Absolutely, and I, I love Jordan Anderson. I, I love the way he brings so much passion to the racetrack. His interviews are incredible. And you know, listen, he's trying to do this the hard way. It's not easy yeah. to put two cars on the racetrack and doing it at the level he's doing it. And obviously, Speedway Racing presents an amazing opportunity for them that they've capitalized on before. Yeah, you can bet when they go green, these three cars are going to drop the hammer. I'm looking at... Parker Retzlaff and thinking, whoa, this guy, he is a superstar in the making. I think he's got a lot of raw speed, a lot of skill. And, and like you said, Joe, I really look at Jordan Anderson racing, and, and that it's just a bootstrap effort. Those guys are, are just every week finding ways to make things work, and uh, Daytona was a great example of that. Get in our race analysis today, 163 laps, just over 250 miles. The stage breakdown, 40 and 40. And then an 83-lap run to end it. But fuel mileage is going to be a big deal. A lot of teams saying they can make it all the way in that final stage, something we'll keep an eye on. And we touched on drivers that have to go to the rear. Some big names coming from the back. Brandon Jones, who we expect to do good things. Top 10 last week at Daytona, driving for Junior Motorsports. You got Jeb Burton, mentioned Parker Retzloff, and Ryan Ellis making his 100th career start today. Going to have to come from the back as well. Our forward performance onboard camera, that's Haley Deegan, running for Rookie of the Year. John Hunter Nemechek has our Toyota on board. Won this race last July, starting row two. And on the front row, Bennett Transportation riding along with Austin Hill. Won in March last season. His two wins here, he's led almost 200 laps combined. We know he's got speed. And the discussion at some point today, no doubt, going to center around the 48 of Parker Kligerman. Let's hear what they're saying on the radio. Just pull your belts tight. Let's go to work here. We'll have a good night. All right. Sport, thank you guys for the hard work. Big opportunity today. We know how close we've been here before and how good we are. And it's a huge opportunity. And I tell you what, to pull your belts tight. It's like the understatement <laughs> yes. of the year. When you go into turn one here and really into three the first time when you're full song, and you're in a pack, and, and don't, don't forget, these guys didn't practice. The practice isn't a thing when you come to super speedways anymore. So you just hope the guys got it right. You know, you hope they put everything together just right, and you're not crashing into the racetrack and you're bottoming it out or, or anything funky like that. So it's a, always a little nerve wracking the first couple just to see what your car is going to do, how it's going to handle, but not lose any track position. You can't afford to ease into it. You got to go. It's just a little sketchy. This, to me, is, is one of the toughest tracks on the circuit, Joey. The sensation of speed here. You know, it's not as fast a track as Daytona and Talladega, but it feels faster mm -hmm. in the car. Even the one lap of qualifying we had today, you drive down in the corner and you just shrink in the seat with the G-forces just pulling you down. That's because the radius of the corners are really small here with a lot of banking. It's an intense racetrack. Let's listen in on the 21 team as we go green. Fast race car today, obviously, up front again. Nice and smooth on pit road all day. I'm going to work in here for you guys. Uh, let's just have a smooth day today. Uh, everybody do their job, minimize the stakes, be there at the end when it matters. Thank you. Teammates working together at the start. Jesse Love wins the pole but goes outside. Are they going to do the okie dokie right from the beginning here? Or what do you think, Joey? Uh, that's why we got to watch and see exactly how they're going to play this one out. It's, it's hard to say this early in the race how they're going to play it. Maybe they'll both choose to lead each line and control the field that way. Or maybe they'll get nose to tail and start pushing. We'll see. Pace cars on pit road. 250 miles from Atlanta Motor Speedway. The NASCAR Xfinity Series underway.
big push by Riley Herbst. Tried to get Jesse Love clear to lead. Didn't quite work out there. Doesn't look like they're going to work together as teammates right at the start here, Joey. Well, I'll have to kind of wait and see how this goes here. You know, like I said, to go into this corner into turn three, everyone's getting a feel for their car, what they're going to have. You see them kind of moving around. See that separation from the first row to the second row. That's everybody looking for a little bit of air, looking for that handling. And then they draft back up on the straightaway. This is what we're going to see most of the day. The best cars can stay really close in the corners. The really, really good cars will be able to go three wide, maybe high later in the race. You have to believe, as I look through the race film for this race, coming in the broadcast booth, the outside lane, Joey, kind of dominates this racetrack for the NASCAR Xfinity Series. You got to think it's just a matter of time, Joey, before it takes over here, as we see Jesse Levin outside lane clearing for the lead. All right, and he comes down in front of his teammate, trying to help pull him through. He wants his teammate behind him. That's what's going to be the safest thing for him. So you see him on the bottom, trying to give that sniff, that draft, to Austin Hill. Not able to make it happen at the moment, though. Riley Herbst thought about dropping down in front of Hill from that outside lane. Black and green, number 98. And what's keeping this bottom lane alive, I believe, is you have a fast car on the bottom. Austin Hill, obviously fast, qualified up there. But look, there's no oh, one behind yeah, him. There's nobody there, Joe. I mean, look at the next car. Probably four, four lanes back there with Parker Clickman. Josh oh. Williams going in the wrong direction. Oh, really checking Whoa. up big back Brennan there. Brennan Poole hangs on to it in the blue and white 44. That's a big moment. Nice save by these drivers. Josh is still off the pace. Looked like a little damage. Yeah, he's got on the back some in the back. Maybe he's got Copy a flat tire. Flat. Let's see what happened on the replay here. Looks like they're going. It looks like it's flat before he ever got in the corner, Joey. Yeah. Uh, Maybe he got some contact before that. That caused it to go down. We've seen a lot of flat tires in the truck race earlier today, too. He, he was, was running up there first, but. Not the start. He wants his day. Yeah, here you can definitely see the tires down. And this is this is a huge penalty. Pit road here is super long. The pit in is all the way back in turn three. They got to come all the way around, change that tire. They're already coming around to put him down one lap now, and he's, he's still he's in turn go three. Three laps down here. Yeah, this is going to be really costly, hard to make this one up. How about Austin Hill trapped down low? He's by himself. But look at that separation. This is what I'm talking about, guys, how it's so different than Daytona and handling comes into play. That's why there's separation in the pack. There's some good cars, some bad cars, and they're just all sorting it out right now. Well, they're learning in real time how good their car is, Joe. You know, with limited practice here, these guys don't know when they drop the green what they've got. We've talked about that earlier before, and they're finding out in real time. Justin Allgaier. Finds himself outside the top 10 early. Right now, the eight is going to wreck. He is sideways. The eight is his teammate, Sammy Smith. And, and always a good way to kind of judge how cars handle, I think, is when you go into the corner and see if someone has to lift or slide up the racetrack, if they can't follow right in line and keep that that slipstream, that draft, as close as they want to. That's when you know they're going to want to come in and work on this thing, but you got to wait till the end of the stage to do that. Yeah, that's a, one of the biggest struggles here is these guys didn't get to practice, don't know a lot about their cars, and are really only going to get two pit stops here today. So two chances to work on. And oh, by the way, on those two pit stops, they need to be as fast as possible, because if you lose track position, it can really make your day tough. Jesse Love leading from the pole. Riley Herbst is second. Then it's Sam Mayer and four Toyotas from Gibbs, Truex, Nemechek, Smith, and Creed.
Just underway from Atlanta Motor Speedway, NASCAR Xfinity Series, part two of our doubleheader. On a great day in Hampton, Georgia, Jesse Love starts on the pole. We were uncertain, how is he gonna handle it? Takes the outside lane, slides in front of his teammate, and he's led every lap. And check out the sun here. This has gotta be tough for everybody. Yeah, involved. the sun is tough, and so is the handling of this car that's in front of us. Whoa, Joey, you and I both uh, took a lurch back in our seat watching Ryan Tricks. Looked like he got pretty loose in three and four, but uh, Woo, that was a moment. He's definitely getting loose. You can kind of pinpoint some of the cars that aren't handling really well right now. The 98 of Riley Herbst is one that stands out to me. He's got pretty good air being second in line, and he's not able to stay as close to Jesse Love as I think he would want to at this case. So yeah. handling's coming in more and more as the laps are burning off. These guys are wanting to adjust on their stuff for sure. We've seen a few drivers try that low lane. Now, Austin Hill was stuck down there. He was able to slide up into the outside line. Sheldon Creed had a peak. Chandler Smith was down there a moment ago. They've got to time it just right, Adam, to get it to work and, and find a hole to blend right up into. And if you don't, you fall all the way to the back of uh, the line here. And we keep seeing that over and over again with this front group. I think we're going to keep seeing it. Uh, and maybe it'll get better, like you said, when the sun goes down, handling is going to improve on these race cars, and, and you're going to be able to be a little bit bolder, a little more aggressive with the cars. And it's really, I mean, it's a risk versus reward at this point. You look at how big the pack is, okay? If I'm third in line, I'm probably not willing to make the move to go down there and try to pick off one car, because the risk is I go all the way to the back of this single file pack that you see that's maybe 11, 12 cars deep, maybe less than that even. But if I'm third from last in that group, well, heck, I got nothing to lose. I might try to pick one or two off and see what I can do and maybe learn something for later. Sam Mayer third right now, Josh. And you guys were talking about the fact that they did, did not get practice before this race. And Sam Mayer's spotter, Kevin Hamlin, has been coaching him through each and every turn, letting him know where the 19 is beating up behind him, but also letting him know where other cars are making lanes move, whether it's the bottom lane. And also mentioned that they watched the truck race earlier and said, watch out for that third lane. Some trucks were able to make that work. So keep an eye on that as things play out in this race for the one, guys. And that's a solid point about the third lane. But there was also a few guys that hit the wall. Yes. <laughs> yes. So to my point, your car has to handle really well to make a bold move like that. Joey, and as the I sun goes down, it's going to, you know, the grip will come in a little bit, the track will cool off a little bit, and, and maybe that comes into play more. But they're also dealing with a lot of wind here, too. Joey, I always find it's the crew chiefs and the spotters that think it's a great idea to go to the third lane. It's just mm. very seldom the drivers at this point of the race. Uh, but to your point, the, the third lane here in Atlanta, that's the, the I, I think that's the sketchy lane. That's the lane where you can get in trouble really easily, especially off of turn four. Uh, you know, it's a little bit rougher up there, and it's just no forgiveness. So if it gets clean, maybe they can get up there. Mm. I guess we'll, we'll find out here. And they want you to make that move until you hit the wall, and then they go, what were you thinking? Yeah. Why'd you do that? Yeah, what'd you do that for? <laughs> There's still 20 sala 21 laps left in the stage, Joey. Jesse Love started on the pole last week at Daytona, led 34 laps, got a stage victory. Starts on the pole today. He's led our first 19. So who is this driver that's making his debut over at Richard Childress Racing? 19 years old, from California, started racing as a youngster. And what he did a season ago in ARCA is just ridiculous. 18 top 10s in 20 starts. He won half the races that earned him this opportunity. And so far, so good for the Deuce. You got to think he's one of the top prospects in NASCAR. You know, we talk about the Xfinity Series, making names and getting drivers up to the top. He's showing why he's worth that, uh, that praise. Absolutely. See Parker Kligerman trying to make this happen. Austin Hill, he's not patient either. He's trying to move his way forward, which is working Whoa. for him trying to pick off one at a time. He's going to try to sneak in this hole. It's going to close up. But it seems like his car is fast enough and handles good enough that look at the, the time he's, he's able his to lane. gain. Yeah, he moved his lane right there. Clean air. He's able to hold it more wide open. But if you can't get a hole back up. He's got this traffic in front of him, too. That's not going to help him. Hill had fallen back as far as eight, oh, racing for third or fourth right now. And some lap traffic in the way. Regan? Well, Adam, interesting on the 98 car, Riley Herbs, Riley Herbs running in second place right now. We've wondered about Atlanta and how it's weathering, how it would affect the tires. Riley came on the radio just a moment ago, told his crew chief, Devin Restivo, I have no front tires left. Mind you, that's 21 laps into the race, and he's saying he has no front tires less left. Interesting on the car already. And how they will manage the latter portion of this race, because we felt like it's all about track position. You make that final pit stop into stage two, you go the distance. But if tires are a factor, could change the thought process down 
on the pit lane. By the way, updating Josh Williams. He had the tire issue early, made the unscheduled pit stop. He's three laps down in 38. Jesse Love, Riley Herp, Sam Mayer, the top three, side by side with 18 to go, stage one. Inside of 15 laps to go, opening stage for the NASCAR Xfinity Series here at Atlanta. Jesse Love controlling this race. Riley Herbst right in his hip pocket. Love leading all 26 laps today. He led 34 last week in his debut. That was the most laps led by a driver in their first start since Kurt Busch when he led 70 back in 2006. That's pretty good well, company if you're Jesse I'd Love. I'd say that's great company, and he's looking like he's going to have an even bigger day than that. It's going to get interesting here, Joe, when we get to these last few laps of this stage, because it, it looks to me like Riley Herbst might be saving a little bit here for him, and maybe looking to make a, a last lap pass or so to win this stage. I think everybody's kind of testing the waters and seeing what they have, seeing what their competitors have. You know, you see Austin Hill back there. He's wanting to get a little bit more closer to the front of this pack, so he has a chance to win this stage. He's back far enough saying, you know what, I'm going to go for it. Nemechek's done it a couple times. They've both tried and failed so far. So they keep trying to move their way up. Their risk now is gone. They might as well keep giving it a shot. We've seen Parker, Parker Kligerman go for the bottom and kind of made it work out. Lucky found the hole to get back up. I think he's going to be patient for a while. Still 12 to go in the stage. You don't want to go too soon. But you also don't want to miss the opportunity and let that second lane get there before you're able to get down in front of him. It's really interesting. The top three have pretty much stayed the same. Love, Herbst, and Mayer. Outside of that, from fourth on, that, on back, there's been a lot of give and take. And, and here's a name we've not mentioned. Cole Custer. He said they really planned for the race, didn't put as much in it for qualifying, didn't want to be all the way trimmed out, built it for handling, qualified 11th, and he finds himself outside the top 10, riding in the 16th right now. Yeah, that's a bit of a surprise. I, I would have thought he'd have been one of the cars to beat here today. Um, we'll have to see if they can get an adjustment in this car and get it where he wants it to be. Back portion of the top 10, side by side. 16 is A.J. Allmendinger, Allgaier behind him. Sheldon Creed in the 18, new ride, going from RCR to Joe Gibbs Racing. That inside lane going from Joe Gibbs Racing to JRM, Sammy Smith in the 8, pulling him around. And so this out, pack has actually grown, Joey. When, when we went to break, it was 11 cars. Uh, now it's 15 cars. The, the couple of four cars caught them, added to it. But now we got a five car breakaway kind of the front. It's kind of splitting back up. It's interesting to see how the dynamics are working here. Yeah, as soon as they got too wide, it kind of broke apart a little bit. And if you're in a lead pack, you're like, go, baby, go. I want to get away from this pack as much as we can. So when we make the moves late in this stage, the risk isn't that bad, right? You can you afford to make a big run to try to make a pass. Look out. Might lose one or two. Got a little dicey there into one, didn't it? I was way? nervous. Yes. 
You see, they're, they're all just trying to feel it out. It looked like Sam Ayer was right on the rear bumper of Riley Herbst and just kind of like, hey, you know, just so you know, if I give you a push, maybe you can uh, make a move here for me, bud. 81 out of line, Chandler Smith, second year driver from Talking Rock, Georgia. You see now that these two groups have filled back in. Uh, so fifth place, we had a little separation there, right at about A.J. Allmendinger in the sixth place, and they, they've all kind of sprung back together. And with eight to go, business is going to pick up soon. It's going to start further back, and, and that second lane may start making some headway, but I, I totally expect the guys in front to be as patient as possible until you see about three to two to go, and that's going to really pick up business. It doesn't make a lot of sense right now if you're the second or third place guy to, to, to make a move. But way more risk than reward. You know, and you need cars to go with you for it to work. You're kind of like almost waiting for, hey, somebody else back there come down there. Maybe give me a little push and help me out here. And just, you're looking for teammates. You're looking for any factory alliance, right? Any Chevys, any Fords together. And, you know, what's it look like when I make this move? Do Is it possible if someone's going to go with me? Or right, you're in your Riley Herbst position here. He's the lone Ford right there. You know, if you make that move, you better get the lead and get up in front of Jesse Love, because if not, you're going to the very, very back of that pack. This reminds me a little bit of Daytona a handful of years ago when you'd run that single file line outside and there would always be a risk taker that would go down there, try to island hop, mm -hmm. right? And yes. typically, it was Brad. It was a cup, <laughs> I was say, it was, it was a cup regular who didn't have as much to lose, and yeah, you needed those yes, series yeah. regulars let's, to let's come go, in line guys. with let's you. Let's go, guys. Let's go. Show me what you got. This is a good chance right now. You know, we talk about this series being a stepping ground to the cup series. This is a good chance right now. Show me what you got. Show me how you make a move. Show me how you can carve through a field. Show me how you can play some offense. What I see right there is Riley Herbst almost left the top open. That's the last thing you want to do is let someone slip you to the top. It's game over. Yeah, that's a ticket to the back. I'll tell you who I'm impressed by in this group, guys, is uh, Shane Van Gisbergen. You know, he doesn't have hardly any experience in these cars, and he's running in the top 15. That's really impressive. How about him stepping out there and saying that name? I went for it. I Stage for one, it. he jumps Very right impressive. in. Yeah, I went for it. Uh, I didn't think I'd be able to do it, guys, but I did it. Look at this. These are two drivers we felt like were going to be major candidates, and this race is a long way from over, but they both went down to the inside, got aggressive. They lost that track position. Yeah, now Chandler Smith and Austin Hill. 14th and 15th and on the outside looking in when it comes to getting some stage points yeah, with here. Four laps to go. It's going to be very hard for them to get any stage points. Over two and a half seconds back. Uh, we kept seeing Chandler Smith make moves. We, we saw Austin make moves and they just didn't pay off. And everybody's taking note of that. John Hunter Nemechek, he ain't scared though. He's, he's made quite a few runs to the very bottom, trying to make it work. Just nope. And that's what happens when you got no friends down there. You're going to go all the way to the very back. How about Neiman check on Monday? Runs the Daytona 500, finishes top 10, goes over to the Xfinity garage, hops in his Xfinity car, and finished top 10 there as well after being a lap down on two different occasions. He's having a week, isn't he? All right, guys, this is where it picks up. Stay up here in the front. This is where the moves are going to happen. Coming to two to go. When do you make the move? That's the question. When do you start to back up? If you're Riley Herbs, you start backing up to the one of Sam Mayer, trying to get a run. At what point do you do that? You got to get past these lap cars first. Yeah, these lap cars are going to make it really difficult. There's, they're going to clear this one last lap car here, and then there's two uh, quite a bit of ways ahead. Maybe they'll catch them on the last lap. I'm not quite sure. Dawson Cram here you see getting past. They're backing up. You can see Love's jumping out there a little bit. I'd love to hear the conversation right now on two radio, coaching up the rookie as we come to one lap to go in the stage. Who got really far ahead? Then one. Jesse Love has led the first 39 laps. Can he finish the deal Parker and win stage move. one from the pole? And he's got no one there with him. Look for the run to come from the 98 down the back straightaway here. If he can get the push. Here it comes. Oh, oh. Sam Mayer out of line in the one. Drafting help from Parker Kligerman. Final lap, first stage at Atlanta. That's going to give this stage to Jesse Love. They're side by side, and they're not going to get there. Jesse Love back to the line, leads the first 40 laps and wins the stage. That's six straight stage victories for Richard Childress Racing in the draft. Wow. That's pretty impressive. Pretty strong race cars. Great race car driver doing his job. In the second straight week that the rookie has been able to win stage one. So Jesse Love wins it. Herbst is second. Mayor Truex Kligerman, the top five. We're off and rolling with the Xfinity cars here 
at Atlanta Motor Speedway. Stage one complete at Atlanta. Let's get pit stops, Josh. I start with the 19 of Ryan Truex. He said that car started to build tight up top. Felt he was overworking those front tires as far as the one of Sam Mayer. He said the balance of that car is good. He said it was a little edgy in the corner, but he doesn't want to change anything. He likes the way that thing is driving. Regan? The 98 of Riley Herb still tight through the center of the corners, but also fighting loose on entry. The team is going to adjust for the tight in the center of the corners, meaning that the front tires aren't working as good as he wants. And the two of Jesse Love started off just a little bit free at the beginning of the race. That car transitioned to getting too tight at the end. Crew Chief Danny Stockman is going to adjust on it to get ahead of when the nighttime comes and the track changes. You pick pits based on how you qualified last week at Daytona. Jesse Love won the pole there. He's got the number one pit stall and he wins the race off of pit road. Riley Herbst second in the stage lost a few positions there on the pit lane. Why don't we dial up the birthday boy. Let's do that. I like that idea. Riley Herbst Brad Keselowski in the FS1 booth. You got a copy. Oh, let's try the other channel here Brad. More of the same here and I haven't seen anything out of the bottom. We'll give him a second to finish talking. Riley Herbst, Brad Keselowski up here in the FS1 booth. You got a copy? Yeah. Well, we'll have Maybe to come not. back to another try. But he looks good. It's his birthday, so we're going to tell him happy birthday. You want to sing to him since we uh, can't interview next him? Time. <laughs> next time we'll sing to him. I was going to let you have that one on your own. <laughs> That's your debt for all the rain you've brought us this year, you know? <laughs> Stage two coming up.
Not bad to watch the choose too, I guess. I love these ISO cam shots we're getting of the fans. Tonight on Fox Primetime Hoops, top-ranked UConn is on a mission to repeat as national champion. They're taking on Villanova. Coverage starts 7 Eastern on Fox and the Fox Sports app. The reigning champs trying to get it done again. Coming off a loss earlier this week on the road against Creighton in Big East play. Here's our stage one points. Jesse Love, top of the list. Overall, you look at that, a nice mix of drivers and teams there. And when you have one of these drafting races, you want to deliver in the stage because you never know That's when you're right. going to get caught up in an accident and you need that to save your day. Absolutely. You it's know a fresh wound, okay? You didn't have <laughs> to go there already. Yeah. Oh, oh, I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. But no, for tomorrow, you're right. Yeah, you know, if you win the stage, I'm like, oh, now I can just go run the race. And if, if something bad happens, like, ah, who cares? But uh, you still want to win the race. Don't get me wrong. But you don't leave there like we have no points, no finish. We're in a bad spot for next week. So you're right. Winning a stage or, or getting a lot of stage points, that's a big deal for a team. Get something out of the day, right? Like, and that's why the stage points are so important. And, and, you know, you saw the field there, pretty pretty calm. You know, I really thought more runs would generate, you know, there on the last lap. And it just seemed like uh, everyone's fairly calm, not not making crazy big moves there. And, and maybe it's because their cars aren't handling as good as they want to yet and they're afraid to make those big moves as they go through the choose right here. We saw a couple cars coming back down pit road. We had penalties. Brennan Poole in the 44, the 9 of Brandon Jones. Josh Williams, as we know, he's several laps down. Shane Van Gisbergen yeah. is back in. He was not on my penalty list. Looks like they might have a problem with something. That car was running really well, too, with yeah. Paul. We had three rookies inside the top 15. He, Deegan, and obviously Jesse Love, who's been so strong. Yeah, hard to say what they're working on back there on the left rear. Almost like the battery box for a second, but I couldn't quite tell, Joey. To get a report on that later. Anthony Alfredo Garrett Smithley also getting penalties in that first exchange of the day. Crowd's been great this weekend, and the weather helps that. Beautiful weekend here in Atlanta. This is one of my favorite races of the year. We got the weather to cooperate with us, but the action here in Atlanta. Doubleheader today, of course, the cup race tomorrow. This is uh, it's one of my favorite races just to watch. That's why I like being up here in the booth with you guys. Absolutely. Now, this is where it gets a little. Uh, a little bit more intense. They have a very heated discussion here between this lovely couple. Um, they seem happy. They were about talking Austin about the Hill. shoes. I, uh, I, I, maybe so. Maybe that's what they're arguing about. And I know one thing. If you chose the bottom lane, you better get after it before it's too late. Because as soon as they start single filing up top, you are going to fall to the back. A whole bunch of Chevys at the front as we begin stage two. Outside lane, control car, Jesse Love. And good pushes all the way through there to first Three, four rows. Justin Agar up in the mix. We talked about him earlier in the race. He was kind of mired back in that 10th place position, and now here he is. Looks like he's going to help clear for the lead. Teammates working together. One is Sam Mayer pushing Sammy Smith. Bottom lane, they're right behind Parker Kligerman in the 48. Parker's just got a little gap there. Do you think he's going to fill? Oh, no, he's going to keep charging on the bottom, Joey. See if he can't get this lead up the line. For the first time today, Jesse Love did not lead a lap. Give that one to Parker Kligerman. One well, thing that I think is interesting here is that 48 car, they're kind of teammates. They, they work almost out of the same shop as the uh, RCR cars, and he's got good pace. He might be one of the guys uh, we talked about in the pre-race, but he might really legitimately be the guy to contend for Jesse Love and Austin Hill to win this race. And he definitely looked like he, you know, he obviously is one of the most experienced drivers out here, but he's also got one of the best handling cars, it looks like. He's able to make a lot of things happen. But you're going to have to, <laughs> the bottom lane is going to be tough. It's going to be tough to get going if, if people keep bailing on it. And you see it, you know, the bottom lane's already getting smaller. It's getting less cars in it. They're losing that energy. It's going to start moving backwards here in a little bit. You're going to want to find a hole quick. Yeah, you're seeing the gaps grow. That's always the telltale sign that I think we look for as drivers. When the lane you're in, the gaps are getting bigger, that's bad news. You know that lane's about to die off. And it's really all about the top two or three cars in that bottom lane. Those are the ones doing all the work. If they can stay close to you through the corner so you can get that push down the straightaway, you have a shot. But as soon as you get that gap, look at that gap from, from uh, the bottom there at Parker. It's just it's huge, right? And you can't you can't you know compete when you don't have someone right behind you. Regan, 
We'll add him to 97 to Shane Van Gisbergen. We saw him come down pit road right before the green again. They made an adjustment to the left rear of his car based on not only what they learned from their teammate of Josh Williams, who's had two left rear problems now, but also what they saw on the tire when it came off during his pit stop. It was shined up. It had been rubbing the fender. They went ahead and tried to fix that now before it became a bigger issue. Still on the lead lap is Van Gisbergen, but being scored back in the 28th position. There's the team car, Josh Williams, 38. He's eight laps down. So that's interesting. I, what I really hear him saying is that he can practice these cars. They had a tire rub on the 11 car, caused a failure. They were very nervous about the 97. They wanted to give another shot, make sure that he doesn't fall out of the race with a flat tire as well. I want to give a pop here to Austin Hill. Starts on the front row, got stuck down in that bottom lane, drifted all the way back right around 15th toward the end of the opening stage. Good pit work. Gets a restart in that outside lane, and here he is third doing the things we expect him to do at Atlanta. I was going to say, are you surprised by that by any means? He was able to choose the third row on the outside. That whole third lane really moved forward, or the outside lane really moved forward on that restart. They all stuck together. Now you see him running one, two, three. Well, he did take two tires. The 21 car took two tires uh, along with uh, his teammate. Jesse Love in the two. Parker Kligerman took two tires. So did Justin Allgaier and the eight of Sammy Smith. So a handful of drivers that had that track position got two tires and trying to stay up front, control the race. And controlling this race is everything. You get up front and able to control it. It, it seems like it's, it's a little harder for people to take control from you. If you're smart and you protect the top lane, you're going to stay up there. You might get somebody you know, gets gutsy enough to go to the bottom and maybe pass you, but you, you're not going to go back many spots, maybe one or two at a time. Whereas Daytona, you make a bad move, something bad happens, you know, somebody slips you, you can go all the way back to 30th before you know it. A lot different here. Nima check out a line, and it doesn't look like it's going to pay dividends. Almondinger going by in the same for Sammy Smith, 15 of 40 laps down in stage two at Atlanta. Jesse Love leading Justin Allgaier, Austin Hill, Riley Herbst, and Parker Kligerman. You gotta have your shades on a sunny day in the ATL. that. 
Under caution for the second time today here at Atlanta Motor Speedway. The 14 of J.J. Yaley going for a ride while we were away. Let's take a look at this replay, Joey. Here what see, happens here? Here you see J.J. He's getting pushed down the front straightaway. And what you're going to see is just this is a little tricky area. He had to check up a little bit not to run into Jeff Burton. And then that just kind of gets things a little stacked up. And he just gets pushed around. A little slide does a good job at, at keeping it down. This is where you get nervous when you see someone sliding into oh, one. Yes. Is if they're going to come back up the racetrack and wipe out a bunch of cars. JJ, experienced driver, did a good job at holding the bottom while he's spinning. After that, he's going to need four tires and a change of pants. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's get a look from Haley Deegan and see her view of this. 91 right behind Yaley is Kyle Weatherman. Here's the onboard with Deegan. Oh, wow. Blind two in the sun. Yeah, she, she went for the throttle. Now, you can go either way with that one. You it's really a tough can. call either way because you see that car, and you're like, should I throttle up and get past as quick as I can? Or do I slow down and, and ended up not mattering because he stayed down there. Pit road's open here. Any takers? Yes, who we got here? It's the H.A. Almendinger, looks like. This is interesting. You pit here. There. You kind of flip the stage. You're probably going to come back at the end of the stage and top off with fuel so you can make it to the end. But some drivers that we anticipate are going to be there at the end playing the strategy game with just over 10 to go in the stage. Yeah, it's an interesting play here. It's going to shorten up your pit stop on the next one as well. So they're going to get some track position back, but they're going to be so far back, it's going to be hard to make up that much track position with a shorter pit stop. Josh? Ian and Sam Mayer are coming in, and I talked to him earlier today. He told me the plan was to be aggressive in this race, so maybe that's why the plan to come in and top off. We know he's happy with the balance of this car, but they want to do what they can to give themselves an advantage, Regan. 16 of A.J. Allmendinger had been complaining about it being a little bit too free on entry early in the race. This run, though, saying that it's already moving around with the rear, still feels free, has a little bit more lateral movement. That means the rear tires are sliding around more than he would like to right now, so they're going to go pit and make some adjustments to that car. And I said 10, over 10 to go on the stage, you're, you're at 20 to go. So, you know, with that much, it's a little bit more difficult to play yep. the game and make anything out of it. Probably go green here with 15 laps that's going to stage roughly, and I'm not a smart man, but that's going to be hard to get up to the front to win this stage for these guys. Second caution of the day for J.J. Yaley. Inside of 20 to go, stage two, when we come back to Atlanta.
Motor Speedway, and cautions have been a thing since we reconfigured this racetrack. Last four races here, since they upped the banking, narrowed the corners, we've averaged nine cautions a race, 36 of them in the last four events. Today, working our first one for incident, and I'm going to I'm going to knock on wood because yes. we don't want to have an outbreak. Well, you know, chaos is about to ensue here. This guy here, he's already concerned. He's my, that's Paul. That's Paul Wolf, guys. He's getting ready for the race tomorrow. <laughs> Joey's crew chief. Ah, he's, he's studying film. He's, the, he's getting a quick nap in during caution, ready for the action. Speeding penalties for Alfredo and Yaley. They drop to the rear for the restart and teammates on the front row. This is like the start of the race. Jesse Love to the right of Austin Hill. Jesse Love keeps picking the top, and, and I'll give him credit. That's a smart move here. It's worked <laughs> out for him every time. I don't know why he would do anything different at this point, but I do like this bottom lane. I like this bottom lane more than any of them I've seen so far. Austin Hill, Parker Kligerman lining up 1-2 on the bottom. That's the best chance I've seen so far. I wonder this. I know if you're Jesse Love and you're leading, you don't want cautions. But he needs some restarts to educate himself on how to handle these situations, especially if he's leading late and we get a big restart. And you've got to think that's going to happen. If you go back to that history that we just saw as we were coming back from commercial, lots of yellows at the end of this race. He's going to have to master them. Going to be 17 remaining, stage two. Top lane's pushing good. It's probably going to get on the back stretch pretty well. But you also see the bottom starting to tighten up as well. No rules about locking bumpers here. You can't lock bumpers at Daytona and Talladega, but in the draft at Atlanta, it's okay. So you saw Allgaier locked up there and giving a big shove to Love. That is no problem. Three wide over here in about 10th place. That's the Nina check car in the middle of the 20. Not where you want to be at Atlanta, three wide. These cars need every bit of racetrack you can get. And when you have a car in your inside, car in your outside, there's not a lot of racetrack, Joey. No, it's, it's a pretty sketchy place to be. They figured it out pretty quickly and said, okay, I'm going to get out of this situation and then try to get a, a hole back in, in line and push that line forward. And look who Nemechek is behind. 26 of Jeffrey Earnhardt running a part-time schedule for Sam Hunt Racing. First of four that he will run this year. Also going to make an appearance at Daytona in August. He'll run Talladega and Bristol later this year as well. Having a good run so far for sure with Jeffrey's car. You see in front of him Parker Kligerman trying to make this bottom lane work still. But they're losing all their friends. Austin Hill, Parker Kligerman. I, I like that look. And you got John Hunter Nemechek. You got three of the some of the best cars in the field, but that's just not enough. That's not enough cars to make it work. Cole Custer, double zero, defending champion, has found his way into the top 10. Scored eighth right now. And good news for him, he's one of the drivers in that outside lane trying to push his way to the front. And hey, Joey, these guys, if they don't find a, a spot here pretty soon, they're going to fall all the way back outside the top 15. All How about Custer? The front row. Pardon me, Joey. How about Custer, Josh? Yeah, and you guys talked about Custer, who's been trying to work his way into the top 10. Well, you see him running seventh right now. His big complaint was that car was tight early. They made some adjustments at the end of stage one. He said it's better, but still pretty tight right now. Started 11th today, 13th in the season opening race last week at Daytona. You see Parker Bales on Austin Hill there. That just hurts the bottom lane oh, even yes. more. Right move, although Austin Hill probably doesn't think so. Haley Deegan, 25th on board here. Van Gisberg in a part of that mix. He Big that checkup. We got cars in the wall up. at three and four. You hear him lifting. You see the cars up front here, up against the wall. We got one, one on the wall up the floor, slow. John Hunter Nemechek. He won the last time we came to Bottom Atlanta. Covered. No Bottom caution covered. yet. He's got some pretty hard right side damage. You see the sparks. You got to assume there's a flat tire. More 32, you're clear bottom right there. It all started when Parker Clear emerged off of turn two, the, the tight top lane. It, it all kind of just rubber banded back together entering turn three. And you're going to see kind of this accordion action here. And John Hunter Nemechek is going to get the worst of it. 
was running 15. You yes, see him check up and run ahead. Check up. Lots of bumps. It just shuffles him out. Seven wins last year for Nemechek. Made the championship four and has gone back to the Cup Series. Great save by Kyle Weatherman behind him. And he wanted to get down the pit road there and he, he couldn't Just do couldn't it. get there. Not much you can do differently there through John Hunter Nemechek. And it happens that quick. You're, you're riding around single file. Everything seems like it's pretty in control. Wham, just uh, one car's check up and you know you can't see and you're right on top of each other and you're going 180 mile an hour. Things happen really quick. Nemechek gonna run that 20 car, first five races this year. Ooh, that's the shake you don't want to see from the tire changer. So this thing's torn up, that's that face. You know that look, Joey. He's like, hey, you sure you wanna go back out there? <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> I hope that don't happen again. Nine laps to go, stage two this time by. Jesse Love has led 69 laps. I don't think he's done leading. I think he's gonna lead a lot more laps. This guy's really got it figured out. Fast cars, good driver. He's kind of putting the series on notice today, Joey. Yes, but he's got a different situation behind him this time. It was Riley Herbst coming to the end of the first stage. Now at nine to go, you have a, a very experienced, really good drafter and Justin Algar behind him. It could play out a little differently this time. You remember when Christopher Bell was a good young prospect? Last time a driver led over 100 laps in their first two starts. Bell 2017. Jesse Love has now done it between last week and this week. So we can keep him on the list, no doubt. But so. all Geyer is right there. Now I'll tell you who's not right here. Austin Hill. He was not able to get back in line. He fell all the way back to 12th position. That just shows you how risky that inside line is. You know, like we talked to, he started the first car in the inside row, lost 11 or 10 spots. Huge risk to go down there. And you think, boy, I got the front row, though. It, it could work out really well. But one thing I like about Austin Hill is he goes for it. Look at he's trying to go three oh, wide really to the top. The top. He's top trying right to there, slip him. He? He's doing different things. It's an interesting place to make that move. I think he's got the speed here. He handled it a little bit better than Jeffrey Earnhardt in the 26. He's probably going to come up here and fill this. Yep. You see, do a, a little. Pretty well. This is a mile and a half slide job. A little different than a dirt track slide job, but uh, entering turn three there at 180 some mile an hour, you got to come fill that hole as fast as you can. You can hear how much they lift into the corner. Did you hear that? That's that checkup they have. If you can get to the bottom and hold it wide open, that's where you're going to make all your distance up. But if you don't get up down the straightaway, Parker Kligerman in that orange car back there, they eat you up. But Brad, six to go, you're back, you know, outside the top 10 or right at the top 10. You're, you're barely going to get points. You got to go. You got to give yes. it a shot, but <laughs> nobody's trying. I'll tell you who's looking really good right now, A.J. Allmendinger. Remember, he pitted. Uh, right at that stage, uh, in between the stage here, with 20 laps to go on the stage. And he strove all the way back up to ninth place. When when we come back to pit road, he should have a big advantage here. He yeah, should he be has able to options to, to have, you know, a, a shorter pit stop, maybe a fuel only opportunity, or a quick two tire and not have to wait on fuel. He's very well positioned. Hey, by the way, there have been a couple of penalties handed out. Kyle Sieg, Dawson Cram. The penalty was racing below that inside line, the double white and red line. That is out of bounds. Not significant when you talk about the drivers that have been penalized right here and where they're running. But keep that in mind late in this race. It's something we've seen called before. You have that out of bounds under this drafting situation to make sure no one's down there advancing their position. Yes, and a lot of fans ask that question to me all the time. What tracks can you run under the, the, the line? And it's not here, <laughs> not Atlanta, not Daytona until they get everywhere else. No track limits. It's a lot easier when it's a double yellow line. When it's two white lines and a red line, it's a, a whole lot harder to it's describe. Confusing. You know, they, they like to test us drivers' memories. <laughs> they test us in a lot of ways. <laughs> well, here we go. Three to go. This is when it's going to start getting busy. Coming to two to go. You, have to you see in the back there, you see some moves starting to be made back there. You got some experienced drafters like we talked about. Almendinger, Hill, Kligerman. Justin Algaier in second. You got to think that's where the move comes from as we see uh, a couple of penalties being served as we talked in John Hunter Nemechek back down pit road. Apparently he thought the same thing we thought earlier, Joey, that maybe I should not be running this damaged car down. 
And you see where's the move happen first, right? Everyone's building this up as they come to take the last lap. Where's the run going to come from? You got to back up from the leader. That's how that's how you form a run. Is you got to back up to the car in front to behind you, put a little gap in between your, you and the car ahead of you, and when you come off a of turn two, you let her rip, and I'm, you try to build a run, but it doesn't look like he's doing it. Now he couldn't build a strong enough run there at the seven car, Justin Allgaier. This is that's certainly the guy we're looking for. Some good side by side racing here with AJ Allmendinger. Into three, final time, stage two. Love is out front. All guys there, Herbst is there, but nobody making a move. Nothing going to happen here. I don't think they're strong enough to make a move. Just now, it's going to take a little peak low, but there's nothing there. Right away, Herbst actually going to get an early field. Jesse Love gets out the broom, sweeping stage one and stage two. He's led 78 laps today. It's only the sixth time a driver has swept the first two stages on a drafting track. Kyle Larson went on to win at Daytona 2018. The only time the driver getting the sweep has been able to get the checkered flag. Final stage on the way from Atlanta. Tomorrow on FS1, Caitlin Clark, the reigning player of the year, Wooden Award winner, first team All-American, and now the all-time leading scorer in NCAA women's history takes to the court as fourth-ranked Iowa hosts Illinois in the Big Ten tomorrow. It all tips off at 1 Eastern time, 10 Pacific, FS1 and the Fox Sports app. Hawkeyes trying to bounce back, lost on the road at Indiana earlier this week. Joey thinks it's the number. 22. Oh, <laughs> leave it to a NASCAR driver to make it all about the number. <laughs> Pit stops underway as we wrap stage two. 
and for the eight of Sammy Smith said he was just a touch free in three. They're going to tighten him up. The 19 of Ryan Trick said that car a little bit edgy, otherwise good with the balance right sides for the 19, Regan. The seven of Justin Allgaier in second place, just complaining about the dragginess of his card on the front stretch. Keep in mind, though, the wind is blowing down the front stretch, and the two of your leader, Jesse Love, no changes for him at all. He loves his car, told the team that we are good, just wants a good stop. Why are you highlighting the 16? I, you know, I don't want to say I told you so, but I'm going to say I told you so. <laughs> A.J. Allmendinger was in position to take control of the race, and boy, did he ever. Plus He's a come out in the lead. Fuel only, because they made that pit stop under that last caution. That allows him to have a shorter stint on pit road here, and he now will be the man in charge. So I told you so. <laughs> I love you guys. Jesse Love comes off fourth. Yeah, let's dial him up. Jesse Love, Joey Logano in the Fox booth again. You got me? I got you. Dude, you just been out there leading 81 of 83 laps. Your car looks incredible. You're doing a great job at maintaining the lead in those intense moments towards the ends of the stages. But now you, you've lost control of the race. You, 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 you've got a couple of cars in front of you. Now what do you do? I guess the rest of us back out front. When we're out front in clean air, it seems like. Proud of our guys for all the good effort, and uh, my job now to. Well, all right, man. Good luck in there, man. Be fun to watch the end. What's bigger, winning the pole, leading all these laps, winning two stages, or hearing on your radio Joey Logano, the two time champion, calling you dude? I mean, what a way to start the interview. <laughs>you cannot come to atlanta with joey and not talk about the youth movement many years ago when you were coming here 
and doing the deal. This is just down the road, huh? Absolutely. That's when I was somewhere between 9 and 12 years old, depending on who you asked at the time. <laughs> <laughs> I had a couple great birth certificates that really helped me race for a while. <laughs> and, and then eventually I got busted. But I lived right there, guys. That was uh, that was home. Pagano residence yep, yep, at Atlanta Motor uh, Speedway. I'm going to try it. It was right, right around there. I didn't circle it in time. But, uh, yeah, a lot of memories here. And winning here last year was one of the most special wins I've ever had because this quarter mile that sits right in front of us is where I cut my teeth growing up as a racer and always dreamed of pulling into victory lane. Really, I just dreamed of going straight at one point and getting on the big track. <laughs> Stay on That's the big all track. I wanted to do is go on the big track when you're a kid, but to win here is really special. A couple of penalties here uh, as we're under caution. 27, uh, too many men over the wall. Jeff Burton going to start at the rear. 51, Jeremy Clements, a little too fast on the pit lane, so he too will have a debt to pay to NASCAR as we prepare for the green flag. But now I'll tell you that the deck has been shuffled with the running order, not just because of the penalties, but because of the strategy as a whole. All you see Jesse Love back to the front row. He's on that inside lane now, Joey, where he doesn't want to be based on history. Uh, and then we saw Shane Van Gisbergen. He moved closer up to the front. The whole deck got shuffled in this sequence. And, and Jesse Love uh, hasn't tried the bottom lane yet, but he's got a really fast car, and he knows that. So if he can pull it off, it's the car that's going to help pull that one off as long as he's got the help behind him. We've seen that Austin Hill needs to have that. Other thing to note here, that fuel mileage is going to be a thing. They're going to be really close. They're telling me they can go around 75 laps on gas. we got 77 laps to go. I think they're banking on a caution. I think the seven's got some details. What I can tell you is, is that I cannot save under green. I am flat on the floor, everything I've got, just so you know. And he talked about his car being a little draggy, right? A lot of drag on the car. Maybe not the fastest car, but a lot of downforce built into it, so it handles well, possibly. Hard to save fuel when you got a draggy car. But they drive good. They it is good. more comfortable. Yeah. <laughs> Ready for the final stage. Front row, A.J. Allmendinger in charge after playing strategy. Inside of him, the dominator so far in this race, Jesse Love. Now this fight for control is going to be really big. Down four, the back straight away. Four teammates in the second row. Cole Custer inside, outside Riley Herbst, the birthday boy. But look at that gap that's de uh, developing right here. We see it. Austin Hill has fallen off these cars in front of him. That's going to pull this inside bottom lane back and allow A.J. Allmendinger to clear for the lead. That's just what you want to see if you're A.J., not what you want to see if you're Jesse Love, because now this is a fight to get back up in line before the uh, pack here becomes single file. But it's hanging so far. We've seen you know, three or four laps before it fell apart last time. As Jesse Love gets back underneath A.J. Allmendinger. He He's almost got him clear, almost. but not quite. Oh, that would have been great for him if he could have. His tire's a little fresher, too, talking about Jesse Love in comparison to A.J. Allmendinger in that outside lane. Gosh, that car looks so good. Hugs the bottom, doesn't lose any speed in the corner. He's going to have another shot to clear him. We oh, can he's get, him get him one here. and two. Oh! It's going to be tight. Oh, AJ wiggled a little bit. These AJ guys are knows. right on the edge. It doesn't look like it, but I can tell you, these guys are right on the edge. AJ knows he cannot let that two car take control of the race again. It's going to be so hard to pass him. We've seen this right now. Look, at who's the only car that's been able to hold the bottom and actually run for the lead right now? Jesse Love in the two. That car is fast. He's qualified up front. He's staying up front. And he's doing things that others couldn't do at this point. Opposite ends of the spectrum out front. Inside lane, Jesse Love making his second career start. A.J. Allmendinger today, start number 100 in his Xfinity Series career. Really, I feel like he's run more than 100 races. <laughs> he's won 17 well, the of big them. Big bobbles we're seeing out of the two car here. Jesse Love, it's going to keep getting harder for him to run the bottom. Every lap, that car's just going to start losing a little more handling. And he's already got some big bobbles here. This is a big test for Jesse. And the bottom lane's thinned out. It might be up towards the front, but look, there's only four cars on that bottom lane right now. What kind of education is Love getting right now? A big one, because his car is loose. There's no doubt about it. And he's got AJ right on his door. These cars do not like cars on their door, especially right here in the center of the corner. See it bottoming out just a little bit. 
Jesse's working for every little bit of track position. He, this is what we call the foot war. He is battling for one, two foot a corner. If he can find one or two foot a corner, he can clear AJ Allmendinger, but he's, he's so far we're at a stalemate. So close three or four laps ago, been able to slide up, reclaim control, didn't do it, and he remains side by side. AJ's giving him a little bit more room. I think he sees Joey. I think he sees Jesse Love bobbling a little bit. He says, you know what? Maybe I don't want to be right on his Maybe door. Yet. Maybe give him a little bit of room so if he gets loose, I don't I don't wreck. It's going to be a good push for him down into turn one. He here. might clear. That's going to be enough. There he that's goes. That's, that's what he needed. There's that foot war. He won a, a couple foot down that front stretch, a couple foot and one and two, and that cleared him. He no. might want to take Cole Custer to dinner this week. It was a nice little shove from behind there to get him out front. He might want to take his team to dinner. Because that thing's a freaking <laughs> rocket ship, man. Rocket, yes. <laughs> We've said all day, you just can't make the inside lane work unless your name is Jesse Love. Man, I tell you what, it's so nice when you come to a super speedway and you got a car that you can do things with that others can't. <laughs> yeah. you, I always yeah. say super speedway racing, it's, it's like a card game. And you, you get dealt a, a hand, right? And, and sometimes you may have four aces in there and it's looking pretty good and you can't screw it up no matter what you do. And other times you, you got a bunch of twos or something and you can't do nothing with it. Jesse Love's got some aces today. He's got four aces and a wild card. Yeah, yeah, he's got everything good. he needs for any card game you throw at him. <laughs> Give a call Still to Ryan Truex to inside the top five. Run on a limited schedule in that 19 for Joe Gibbs Racing. Eric Almirola going to come over and drive that car next week. As we talk Truex, we go to our Toyota top performers in today's race. Been a tough day for John Hunter Nemechek, who had the issues earlier. See Truex there in six. Chandler Smith, home race for him is 10th. Mentioned Earnhardt earlier, having a good day for Sam Hunt Racing. And Sheldon Creed, who's had three consecutive runner-up finishes dating to last year. Spent some time in the top 10, but right now is 16th. It's one of the fastest lap of the race so far, Sheldon Creed has. So he's got some speed, just a little track position. You know, and the bottom lane's still hanging better right now. Since Jesse Loves got up there, it's, it's obviously got two cars cleared right now and, and maybe more. And as they start to bail, it's going to be even more. But the sun's gone, right? The sun is down. The track's cooling off. I think that's another factor here on why the bottom's hanging a little bit better, a little bit more grip to be available. Look at Brandon Jones in that outside lane, driving the nine. They've had a host of problems today. But final stage, he has established track position, looking for back-to-back -to -back top 10s to begin the year. The other thing you notice here, too, I talk about the track temp cooling off and the cars, you know, getting closer together as well. Uh, you see there's not as much gap in the corners. There's not as many, you know, holes. So it's becoming more and more like what you see at Daytona, Talladega, where the draft is more thing, more means more than the, the handling now. So this is where the cars that don't have much drag are gonna prevail more than the downforce cars. 65 laps to go, we'll take you side by side. It's the Jesse Love Show in the NASCAR Xfinity Series from Atlanta.
always have me amazed. Sixty laps to go for the NASCAR Xfinity Series here at Atlanta Motor Speedway with Joey Logano, Brad Keselowski. I'm Adam Alexander. Jesse Love is leading. Second right now, A.J. Allmendinger. And I said this earlier, he's making his 100th career start in this race. Look at the list of drivers that he's among when you talk about success through 100 starts. Already 17 career victories for A.J. Could make it 18 today. But, but look at the other names on the list. Sam R., Dale Jr., Jack Ingram. Harry Gann, all with 20 or more. AJ has been so good in an Xfinity car. Early, it was all about the road courses, but he actually won on an oval for the first time in his career here at Atlanta in the old configuration back in 2020 and been such a bright spot. Cornerstone piece, if you will, for college racing. Absolutely. AJ's so much experience, and it, it's kind of funny to hear that he's only run 100 Xfinity races because he's been in the sport for so long, but he didn't really run many Xfinity races when he was coming up. He pretty much went straight to Cup. <laughs> so it was quite the transition for him, but you know, now that he's in the Xfinity Series, he's, he's bringing so much other experience from other racing leagues, and it's, it shows up constantly. Jesse Love has had a lot thrown at him in his second start. The latest thing he has to process, saving fuel. Keep saving as you can. We're about two laps short right now to make it to the end. Just keep saving as you can by two, then three quarter. All is in your core. You can save as much as you need to. Yeah, I mean, and it's hard to, it's hard to save fuel as the leader, but you know, their pace right now is about six tenths slower than their fastest laps. So he's, he's most likely saving a little bit. But one thing you know is the cars behind him are saving more. And at what point can they go hard and they've saved their two laps of gas? It's going to take them, you know, the majority of this run to save two laps of fuel, uh, depending on how much they're all saving back there. So it's going to be pretty tricky to make it happen if it goes green from here. If they get a caution, that's going to probably bridge it for them to where they're going to be fine. But you don't know how the race is going to play out. So you got to bank that just in case. And your screen white checkers. You got to think about that, too. If oh. there is a late race caution, we have had overtime here. It, it wouldn't be surprising, would it, Adam? Danny Stockman, the crew chief. This is one of those great fits, right? Veteran crew chief with the young driver. Stockman was on the pit box at RCR when Austin Dillon came into the Xfinity Series. He won Rookie of the Year. Next year, picked up the championship. Well, this is a 19-year-old kid, Jesse Love. He's feeling the need for speed right now, right? And you're trying to tell him to slow down and save fuel. Good luck, Danny. <laughs> I'm actually surprised they said they were only two laps short because if you went down in the garage today, every crew chief said, we plan to pit at the end of stage two and go the distance. And I said, do you need cautions? And they said, absolutely. And we just believe when you look at the history of this race, we are going to get them. Today's field, though, has been totally different. And the fact that they're only two laps short, given the fact that we haven't had that caution flag, surprises me, which would indicate to me you get the yellow and everything should be good. We'll keep an eye on it. And, and sometimes they down. don't tell the truth. Yeah, too, that, that's what I say. You believe everything they tell you, huh? <laughs> <laughs> at this pace, there's no way the field makes it. Uh, they're still running pretty fast. Watching lap times here, 3170s. Fast lap of the race is at 3097. So within seven or eight tenths, I don't think that's enough for them to be able to connect this. I think they need multiple laps, to your point, at least two, uh, probably more than that. Which, I mean, it's, it's hard to say. I mean, for Jesse Love, he's probably going to have a hard time. He's pushing the most air off the nose of that car. He has the most drag that he's, he's getting along here. He's also set the pace, and he has a, you know, a bunch of very content drivers behind him that are like, hey, you know what? I want to save too. You know, it's slowing down things. Maybe not a bad idea. I get, I need to save some gas too. Nobody's really pushing it and going for it and trying to get more track position. So he, he might be able to save some. Let's look at some of these drivers that have fallen back outside the top ten. You look at the list, Justin Allgaier 11th, Shane Van Gisbergen doing a great job again in the 12th spot. Chandler Smith is back there. You got Ryan Sieg in the 39 and Sheldon Creed being scored 16th right now. I'm trying to take a look at the, the fuel, what we're seeing here. Guys, I just don't see him saving enough fuel. Every lap that goes by, the pace is too fast. This is setting up for they're going to need a lot of yellows at the end to be able to connect this. I, I think Creed said the heck with it. I'm just going to go and try to pass him. <laughs> heck with your safety fuel. I'm yes. going. <laughs> just get to the front. Let's go. 
and and that could change it. You know, we we've seen this happen at Daytona 500 last week, where everybody's saving fuel, and eventually everyone's like, "What? Do, why are we going so slow?" <laughs> like maybe you know, it's, a, it's almost like the Tour de France, where like everyone's in that peloton and they're saving their their, their legs, and eventually someone's got to go and make the runner, and. Uh, you know, we saw that happen in the 500. A couple guys were able to take off and, and make the whole field go faster. So a lot of that's going to depend on the leader here and what the, the next four or five cars are content doing or not. So we got telemetry up top here, Joey. And, and what I really want to look at is you see that green bar 100% uh, throttle. That means they're wide open on the gas. They are not saving any fuel. At least these first two cars are, the two and the 16. Uh, if we go a little bit deeper through the field, I was actually just looking at the uh, the two car. He is saving, or the 21 car, Austin Hill, he is saving just a little bit back there. And, and it's easier to save fuel the further back you get because that draft is going to pull you down the straightaways, help you make some speed, and then you can lift in the corners and, and get some of that uh, fuel usage down. So it'll be interesting to see which cars can make it and who can't. Here's, uh, we're going to go to his telemetry here, the 21 Austin Hill. I think what you're going to see is he's lifting just a little bit here. Mostly in the three and four corners. Uh, we'll have to see this next time he comes back through three and four. But it's not a lot. It's certainly not enough to, to get four or five laps of uh, extra running. Yes, I mean, that's all. There you go, here, a little here, lift right little. there. You can see it on the green bar. Yeah, that, our, that's certainly graphics. a little. Very little, yeah. That's, that's not going to be enough. If <laughs> that was if a you're burp, right? Just a quick laps. burp. You're not getting two laps by doing that. Here he's going to lift a little bit more, three and four. So it says the pace, like you said, Brad, is still too fast. But on the other hand, if everyone's in the same boat, then so be it, right? Like you, you keep going. The, the last thing you want it, as the leader is having, you know, everyone behind you be able to make it, and you're not able to because you burnt too much fuel. So what would you rather have right now, Joey? If I'm Jesse Love, oh, we're going to see the 98. Get on the outside of A.J. Allmendinger. That's going to slip A.J. right to the back. That was a power move by Riley Herps. Herps to second. Here comes Truex. He got right up against that wall and one and two, Joey, and, and just got right to AJ's quarter panel. You have to see a replay and again and, and how that happened. That's a huge mistake by AJ Allmendinger because he's going to lose all his track position as this race has that green flag feel. It's going to be hard to make that back up. You're not going to get those spots back. No, not, not unless you have a, an amazing pit stop. You can see the speed difference, you know, at least eight mile an hour here. He's going to get some of it back in the corner, but not as much as he's going to lose down the straight. Right, look how many spots he's lost already in, in a lap and a half. He's going to the back of this pack. All the way back to 14th is probably where he's going to cycle 13th, 14th. Let's go see what happened here. And how did AJ get uh, cycled to the bottom of the racetrack, Joey? He was the leader on the Same. restart. Now he's 12. And here you see AJ in the 98. Just barely slips his outside, gets this side draft. Look how much it slows the 16 car down. I mean, yeah. just instantly you can see the power of being drafted. And, and you know how that happens, Brad? You, you've run so many laps single file. You're thinking about saving fuel. You think everybody's just happy where they're at. And you get caught being lazy. That's what happens. You just kind of like get comfortable. Everything's OK. And all of a sudden, Oh no! They what got happened? to my outside. You just got to stay on your Lulls game you into that all the time. Yes. What about it, Regan? Adam, I can tell you guys that Coleman Presley, who's spotting for AJ right now, was continuously telling him, do not let them get to the right rear quarter panel. Don't let them get to the outside. Kept warning him about that. Unfortunately, AJ's car is really loose right now. He just said, I'm sideways. I can't go up there to block it because I'm too sideways. That's why mm. they're able to get to the outside. Well, that explains some of it, too. If you have to poke yes. your your left front out a little bit to get some air on your car. That's another reason why. And you remember, he doesn't have tires on his car. He did fuel only on that last pit stop, so that might be part of it. Yeah, he Which also took, loosens your car up, fuel only. He last took tires at lap 60 when he came in, as you said, fuel only on that last cycle of stops. Jesse Love, the race leader with 43 remaining.
manage your car. You see this yellow line on pit entry. There's several yellow lines that you have to manage. If I'm Jesse Love, I'm a little nervous about that. Maybe I want a yellow here, uh, double A, but the way this race is playing out, I don't see any scenario where these guys do not have to pit. They're, they're going to have to pit. What are you hearing, Josh? And you guys are having a conversation about the fuel, and I can tell you right now, the conversation on the radio for the 19 of Brian Truex, for the 48 of Parker Kligerman, and the double zero of Cole Custer, they are all right on their number to make it to the end if things stay the way they are right now. Regan? Josh, very similar on my end of pit road. Check in with crew chiefs up and down through here. A lot of hand signals that we are very, very close. Fingers crossed. In particular, though, Danny Stockman on the two car. I just checked with him. He said if we get the same fuel mileage as earlier in the race, we can make it to the end right now. Bad news for the competition if that happens. They've upgraded that because we yeah. heard on the radio we're two laps short. And now here we are with 35 remaining. Maybe and he that, said that might be the, the crew chief number. That's yeah. right. That's right. They lied to us. <laughs> I'll tell you this. He's still nervous. I don't care uh, what yeah, he said, 100%. he's still nervous. Yeah. Well, I mean, a lot of it comes down to the fueler, too. Like, the, how how well did they pack that tank yes. on the last stop, right? If you up a little bit out, that might have been the difference. Yeah. It's so different than when you're at the, you know, at the uh, gas station with your car. You know, you, you fill it until it gets full. You give it a couple extra clicks with the gas pump. You need a good gas man. It gave it a little bit extra there. Right you there need a the couple top. clicks on this one, for sure. It's going to be really close. And I tell you what, if it stays green, guys, it's going to get <laughs> very interesting. If cars start running out of gas or you, you decide you have to pit, what if this thing's one on pit road with two to go and everyone's on pit road or somebody goes for it and stays out and tries to make it happen? It could get really crazy at the end of this thing. Now, they can make it if they continue to slow the pace down. Uh, speed is the enemy of fuel mileage, right? So if they slow down a little bit, they will get inside their fuel number. And the pace has slowed down another step right now. They're now running 3190. So about a second slower than their fastest laps. That's going to help them. But eventually, you get going slow enough, Joey, you get past. Absolutely. And, and that's what's keeping everything pretty much single file, guys. Everyone watching their homes saying, why aren't we super speed? We're racing too wide. Well, they're all saying, shoot, we got to finish. We got to get to the end of this thing and save some gas. So that's why you see this single file, everyone trying to be you know, as disciplined as possible so they have some gas to race with at the end of this thing. You saw in the pylon how many laps Jesse Love has led here today. 120 out front. Allmendinger's led eight, but that was through strategy. I mean, this this day for Jesse Love has been incredible. You see it's back in there now. The one thought, too, is he's running these longer races for the first time in his career, coming up from ARCA. Do you have the mental process to finish a race at this level? How difficult is that as you graduate up through the ranks in NASCAR? I think he's got it figured out. <laughs> I mean, listen, the kids come out of the gates here pretty strong. I know it's a couple different super speed rays, and the tracks will be different as we continue along here. But, you know, his team does a good job of giving him a good car. That's, well, that's half the battle. The, the driver is the other half of the equation. And, you know, so far he's taken, yes, a great car, possibly most, I, I'd say definitely is the best car on the racetrack. But he's also done a great job at maintaining control of this race. and. And the other things that have been thrown at him, right? You still have to execute on pit road. You still got to you know, execute these restarts. He, remember, he was on the bottom lane. He had to execute that part of the draft. He's done a great job up to this point. Yeah, I haven't seen a moment that's too big for him yet. Riley Herc, second right now. Still by half. Just keep looking at his right rear. If he gets lazy, fill the hole. Still by half. <laughs> They know that the leader has slowed down the pace. Now, he just sped it back up this lap. Went from 3190s to 3160s. And I can totally tell you, as a driver, guys listening at home, guys and gals listening at home, when you feel that pressure behind you, like, you know, maybe I won't save for a lap or two. You know, when you <laughs> fell out at 98 car getting close to his rear bumper and maybe trying to slip it outside like we just heard on the radio communication, he's going to run a few faster laps and then slow it back down again. And where this is going to change up, I think, is, is the first crew chief to say, Yes, we're good to go. We got it. They're going to be the first one to be able to hammer down and, and capitalize and maybe make up some track position. If, so maybe the most aggressive saver can be the most aggressive one moving back through the field because they can go back wide open the soonest. But Brad, we already talked about that too, Sam. They're not really slowed down that much. They're not saving that much. The pace has been too fast. Let's look at some numbers for Riley Herbst. Going back to last year, he's been on fire. Six consecutive top tens. Had a run of top fives to end last year. Got his first career win at his home track. 
Las Vegas last fall. And here he is today running second doing exactly what he's been doing the last few months and feeling confident. It's his birthday. He's going back home next week. The planets are aligning for Driver 98, I feel like. Yeah, and keep in mind, Vegas is where he got his first career in NASCAR Xfinity Series. Yeah. So I bet he's super pumped about that. I like the position Riley's in right now. I like the things he's doing. You know, his team really hit a good stretch at the end of the season last year. You can totally tell they're carrying it over to this season. Uh, he's got a great shot to, to steal a win here today from Jesse Love. He's very well positioned. Shane Van Gisbergen, a rookie 11th, Regan. Adam doing a very nice job in the car right now too and think back to earlier in the race they had to pit a second time on one of the yellows earlier so he had to go to the back work his way back up to the front and I asked Shane yesterday who's been helping you and a number of different drivers and, and different people helping to coach him one that stood out to me though another fellow driver from V8 supercars who came over to America Marcus Ambrose said he talks to Marcus every week before he gets to the racetrack Joey and Brad you guys race with Marcus as did I that's a perfect guy to go to and get a little bit of advice about the transition. He's going to be entertained as well. He's a real fun guy to be around for sure. And yeah, Marcus is a fantastic race car driver, uh, whether it's in Australia or over here in NASCAR. Uh, he's the, he did a great job with the transition, I'm sure, not only transitioning over to, you know, stock cars on speedways like this, but just moving to America, like how different life is and all that. I'm, I'm sure uh, Marcus can help with that for sure. I never liked Marcus. He gave me my first Vegemite sandwich. Ah, oh, that ruins it for you. <laughs> Never <laughs> forgave him. <laughs> Let's listen in on Riley Herbst and Team 98. What do you think about the two fuel level? Two is right at it. They just probably still having to save gas, but you're okay. We're fine. Four, I'm going to push you then. Well, he's pushing them all right. He's the pace just dropped down to a 3140. These are the fastest laps we've seen since they had the restart. He's not going to let this two car save fuel. You can see that the pack is stretched back out again. That tells you how fast that the front five are running right now. As you zoom the camera back, you see the nine car Brandon Jones. He's falling off about 10, 15 car lengths. 23 to go. We've got a full moon. A little Saturday night, Atlanta Motor Speedway. And they continue at 100 percent throttle. Yeah, they definitely started hammering down that back 31 36 that time. They were within, you know, two and a half tenths or so of their fastest lap of the race. So game time. They said have they're they good saved, to go on fuel. Have they saved enough? That's the question. Look at these drivers just outside the top 10. Jump back up front. Nice evening for Junior Motorsports. Brandon Jones in the nine cars had some adversities. He's sixth. Sam Mayer eighth, Sammy Smith ninth, Justin Allgaier completes the top ten. They're in that second group, bright yellow car, Brandon Jones leading them around in the draft. It's amazing how fast the pace stepped up. Brandon Jones this last lap ran a 31-28. That's a, that's a rocket ship lap. That's one of the fastest laps we've seen all day. And they're going to catch right back up to that pack in front of them and really a lap and a half time. 20 to go now. And this to me just feels like the calm before the storm. We didn't really get the storm at the end of stage one, stage two, like we anticipated. We'll see if we get it at the end of this race. And if fuel mileage is a factor, there's no doubt some big moments are going to happen in the latter stages. For sure. And right now I'm asking my spotter, OK, what's going on around me? Who's around me? What do I got? I got, you know, if, I, if I'm Jesse Love, I got a Ford, I got a, a Toyota, and then I got a couple Chevy teammates right there. Okay, are they, are they going to save me if, if something was to happen? If, if if those other guys make a move, are they going to go with them, or are they going to bail on them and try to get a you know a three Chevy team type going, you know RCR Alliance, uh, you know situation to to finish this thing? I want to get a plan together for that what if because if there's two cars that are going to pull out and make something happen. I'm thinking it's the second and third place car right now of Riley Herbst and Ryan Truex. It's so hard to build a plan when you're going 190 mile an hour at a, a, such a fast track, uh, even short straightaways like Atlanta. Like you, you try to think like, oh, I need to think about my plan, but I just got to make this corner, right? And these cars, 
the drivers are making it look really good, but I can promise you these cars are not driving great. You know, we're deep into this run, 60 some laps into this run. Uh, the tires are really hot. They're, they're holding on. There it is, Brad, 63 laps since these drivers were on pit road. And you see right there, he pulled his belts tight. <laughs> he said hey, about, about 15 laps ago or so. We'll get one more. Yeah. He said it's going to get something might happen here. <laughs> he thinks this is the calm before the storm yeah. too, right? Yeah. He knows yeah. it. He doesn't think it. He knows it. <laughs> He's been here before. See him sawing on the wheel right there. That, that just goes to show you that these cars are not driving great. They're, they're not just cruising out there, I can promise you. This is the Bennett Transportation onboard camera. Bennett, a local company here in Georgia. 16 laps to go. Austin Hill is fifth. His teammate out front. And Brandon Jones just behind Hill. A little kiss with the wall here for the nine. And he's working that outside nope. lane. Just a I'd say bit more of, than a kiss. A little bit of contact there for our nine car. You guys have mastered that telestrator. Brad really loves it. Brad's been hitting all the buttons up I here. I like this is the coolest thing, <laughs> Fox Innovation here. It allows us to tell you guys, the fans at home, what car we're talking about and really easily point it out. So really cool innovation. Just so you know, home, they got like a 30 second tutorial. And if you've noticed a few times throughout the broadcast, they're learning on the fly. Yeah, but you've been executing trying here, guys. quite nicely for the most part. <laughs> We've been doing good. Like we got arrows. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, we got we got stuff. Look at this one. This is my favorite one. Bam. Oh. Sam Ayer. Yep, there we go. And, and oh, I screwed it up. See, Sam Sammy Smith. Smith. There we go. Curly ninth. Looking good. He's get, just running a quiet day. Both these guys. We haven't heard much from Sam Mayer or Sammy Smith. These guys are going to be there at the end. And, uh, you know, if chaos breaks out, I can totally see these guys uh, bring him in. Sam Mayer would take a quiet day because he crashed early at Daytona last week had nothing to show for the season opener. He needs to bounce back. Such a good finish to 2023 for the driver out of Wisconsin. Mayer had never won. All of a sudden he gets that first win, gets four victories to end the year, made the championship four. High hopes for him. All and this is third season. Cars here, all just gaggled together. They're, they're waiting for that move at the end. On board with Haley Deegan here. Yeah, you bring that up with all the junior motorsports cars together. Yeah, you got to think they're coming up with a plan to go together. Like, at what point can we all go to the bottom? If, if the four of us are together and we stay committed, can we push someone up beside Jesse Love? I don't know. No one else has been able to do it yet. Yes. But <laughs> you might as well give it a shot at some point. Yeah, last lap time, 31-26 for a leader, Jesse Love. I'm going to say no, you're not going to be able to do it at that pace. They're going to need some help. J.J. Yaley out of line, back to pit road. Josh Williams in the 11. You got a feel for Josh. Nine laps down, had the early problem. Had to pit under green. Really never got a fair shot today. Now to 11 laps to go. Starting to see the top two pull away a little bit here from third place Ryan Truex. Get a little draft from this uh, group of slow cars in front of him. Put it to full use, but running a lot of speed here. A lot of speed. If they're trying to save fuel and if it's going to be close, that's not what you want to see if you're Danny Stockman, the crew chief in the pits of the number two of uh, Jesse Love. And that's true. And also, if you're Riley Herbst, I kind of want the pack with me. I need a little bit of energy behind yep. me. If I get a two car breakaway, it's going to be really hard for me to make a big enough run to pass Jesse Love. So I kind of want to pull it back a little bit. Let me get the whole pack here with me. See if I can make something happen at the end of this race. Ten laps to go. Jesse Love to the outside of Blaine Perkins. Kyle Weatherman. Lights is there in the 92. All these drivers at least a lap down. I'm just so curious right now, guys, if these guys can make it on fuel. I, this is a big gamble. And you have to think that not all of them are going to make it, right? There's no other option. You have to gamble at this point. You've gone this far, a green flag pit stop, two and a half laps. Yes. You know, you're going to a couple laps, you're going down. You've got to go for it. You can't be the only car that pits. So yep. everybody's in the same boat. You just hope that, like you said, your fueler did a great job at packing it. Your driver did a good enough job at at saving and your crew chief did a good job at, at, at uh, doing the calculations on this thing. 
Eight to go. Justin Allgaier, 10th. These guys get up in. Are they going to chance in? We're rolling. All of them. The whole field, correct? I think so. And I think they're going to run out. Yeah, I know. We need to be prepared for that, too. Because it's going to get hairy. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> We're saying the same thing, Justin. <laughs> I go back to Charlotte last spring. Remember, we ran that Xfinity race, finished it late on a Monday night after the Coke 600. Justin Allgaier on a fuel mileage run was able to get his first win of the year. Now, the sketchy thing is, when everyone's this close to each other, someone runs out of gas and slows down that much, that's what caused the stack up, right? Causes We've seen a little bit yep. of a stack up earlier and caused a wreck with, with uh, John Hunter. It, that can very much happen at the end of this thing as we come down to the end and everyone's about out of gas. But Joey, I thought you said it right, though. What other option do you have? If you pit, your race is over. You lose two laps. You, you've got to gamble here. You have no choice. No choice. Six to go. And the pace slowed down again here. So the leader, Jesse Love, slowed down for a couple laps here. Went from running 3120s and 30s down to 3180s. He's nervous, too, about fuel. <laughs> Regan? Well, Brad, just to check in, the 98 of Riley Herbst and the 21 of Austin Hill, they've reconfirmed on the radio with their drivers that they are good to go to the end, do whatever they need to do with fuel. And looking up and down pit road, a lot of what we gauge in terms of how close guys are is if we see helmets going on the fuelers on pit road, and I have not seen any of that yet so far. Well, I'd say the crew chief gives you the green light. That's, that's all you know as a driver. That's what you got to do. Get after it. Five laps to go. 148 laps led for Jesse Love. And they're working through these lap cars. I think after that, then then the race is going to start. You know, at what point, you know, we, we saw Riley Herbst had an opportunity at the end of the first stage to, to try to make the pass for the win in the stage. Wasn't able to make it happen. Did he learn a lesson in that situation to be able to form a run at the right time to break the plane of Jesse Love to try to win this thing. Four to go, and I'm legit nervous. I right am so now. nervous right now. I can't wait to see how this is going to play out. I love how we have some crew chiefs that say, oh, yeah, no problem. And other crew chiefs say, yeah, I don't, I don't know about this, guys. They don't know either. Ryan Truex running third. Twice in his career, he's finished third. Here at Atlanta, three oh, we got 98 slow, double zero, double zero slow. They're slow. teammates. Both out of fuel, it looks like. The Down the front stretch. Stewart Haas Racing at the out of the time. draft. And it did happen simultaneously. So that's two so far. Coming back to two to go. The frustration on the pit box. They'll have to pit under green. Jesse Love still out in front. So now if I'm Jesse Love, I'm pretty excited. I got a, a they got two other RCR cars or I said, oh, we got a yellow. We caution. have a caution for Ryan Sieg. The other Ford, <laughs> all three Fords ran out of fuel on the exact same lap. Now, this is going to be even tougher now for Jesse Love. He just bought himself two laps of green flag running, but now he's got to run overtime on that fuel load. Oh, Ooh, boy. Boy. Now what do you do? Oh, and we know these God. cars do not like being low on fuel. Uh, the banking here at Atlanta is pretty steep. The fuel pickups in the right side. This is going to be really interesting. This we, is the worst situation you could be in as a leader. Uh, what do you do? Uh-huh. If you pit, you pretty uh, much know you're not going to win the race. If you don't pit, you might run out of gas. I mean, do you, this, the safe play is to pit. It's the way you're going to, you know, probably say you're going to get a solid top 10 to a top 5. Oh, another Ford out of fuel, Haley Deegan. We're showing 20 cars. On the lead lap right now, make it actually it's 17, 16 cars on the lead lap. Every car on pit road now is that all the Fords ran out of gas on the same exact lap. And you're not getting that restarted, Haley. I'm sorry. These cars are very hard to restart when they run out of fuel. They've, they've got generally cable drive fuel systems, got to reprime them. It's a really painful experience. Riley Herbst tucked up behind race leader Jesse Love. Three to go, and here's how it unfolded. Just like that, just shut off on him. There's nothing you can yep. do as a driver. So frustrating. Riley had put himself uh, in such worst. a great position. You see the double zero the, Cole the, Custer running out of right. gas as well.
hit a 39 of uh, Ryan Seed running out of gas. Of course, Haley Deegan, we just saw. 98 pit box here. And he ran a great race today, too. And it's a shame to lose a chance to win it that way. And, and the worst place to run out of gas, too. Like, they were off a of turn four when it ran out of I gas. Know. Like, oh, my gosh, you go all the way around. You do a full lap. Pushing Haley Deegan back to the pit stall. Get her car refired and full of fuel. It's that full moon. That's what it is. Mm. We, you know, I, I don't want to, again, like, we were talking about this, like, Houston, we have a problem on fuel, right? <laughs> You're right. And right. it happens. What are these drivers doing now? Behind the wheel and, you know, maybe a pit, maybe you don't. But if you don't come to pit road, you got to save fuel. So take me through that process for these drivers on track. Yeah, what you're hoping right now is that NASCAR goes green as fast as they can go because you can save a lot of fuel going this slow, but the reality is you're still using fuel and everybody around you is running out of gas, which means there's a good chance that when they go to go green again, somebody's going to run out of gas and we're going to keep pacing more laps and running more fuel off. So this is this is really painful for these guys. Let's go to radio as we think about overtime. You feel like you saved me a bunch of fuel? Good bit. All right, 10-4. <laughs> rolling with it. Okay. Pits are open right now as they I go down the back stretch. This I thought Vegas was next week, guys. <laughs> it's a gamble no matter what you do here. Jesse Love, is he going to pit? He's down on the apron, but no, he did not hit the commitment line. You see that orange box. None of these guys are pitting. It looks like they are, but they're above that white line. This white line uh, right here is really the line you want to look at. That's the pit road line. So if you're to the inside of that you're pitting you see brandon jones pitting back here these guys are all pitting they're not going to take the gamble we'll follow up on the strategy when we come back overtime at atlanta Start two to go. Daniel Hemrick shoving Austin Hill down oh, low. No. Sideways. Can they hang on? Can Austin can Hill can wins can once can again. Oh, he goes back God. to back here in Atlanta as they crash across the start finish line. Holy cow. We're used to wild finishes 
at Atlanta Motor Speedway in the NASCAR Xfinity Series. And I believe another one is on deck. Six drivers stayed on track. Everyone who came down pit road could be in the catbird seat here because we're going to add six laps with this overtime session. Oh, this is crazy. I mean, we barely could make it before. Now we've ran six extra laps. Now, I know they're under yellow, but I mean, wow. And we're seeing cars run out. We just saw Mayer turn down pit road. Yep. Got the eight car Sammy Smith down pit road. Guys, they've really extended this yellow, and this is going to change it. And they got to choose here. The choose at the end of this race is definitely different. Two laps to go. I'm liking the bottom. I don't, I'm like in any lane where I feel like I can get away from a car that runs out of fuel, Joey. Well, the, there's not going to be one of those. You got to think that this top six, I believe it's about the top six cars, roughly. Top five. Uh, all don't have full fuel tanks. They have very low fuel in their cars right now. Brandon Jones, the first car that pitted here. He'll be on the bottom lane, so if something happens, he can pull to the left. The yeah. one of Sam Mayer was going to be that six car that stayed out. They elected late to come down under caution. And you can see him put the fuel, uh, or they put fuel in that car to, you know, they must have figured out they couldn't make it. That's pretty simple. I just don't see how this top four is going to be able to take off here, Joey. I, I mean, I, they got to keep the pickup full. Like the pickup where they get the fuel in the fuel cell is all the way to the right corner of these things. You got to keep that full. Uh, there's a good chance. Someone doesn't go on this restart. When they want to go, they're going to go Bleh, out of gas. Coming yes. back to the green flag to start overtime, here's Justin Allgaier radio. I stayed out. Everybody stayed out. Oh, my God. Hey, I got to tell you, I really hate this job that you drug me into. <laughs> <laughs> I mean it. Uh, what happened to all those crew chiefs that told us we're fine? What happened to that? Do you yeah. remember that? They, they were wrong. <laughs> <laughs> they were telling a story is what was happening. You saw the rules. Overtime, a two-lap Is he out of out. gas? Yes, yeah, the seven there he goes. Seven's out of gas. Down. Oh, so that's great for oh, Brandon wow. Jones. Brandon Jones now just cycled up to the third position inside second row. And if he doesn't get, he, I don't think he's going to roll back. I don't They're think he is, too. They're going to have to caution for that or extend this caution. Here it goes, two-lap shootout. It's overtime from Atlanta, sponsored by Credit One Bank. Jesse Love out front. Can he hang on? 16 out of fuel. 48 out of uh, fuel. A bunch of them out of gas. They're not going. Two's out of gas. Jesse Love out of fuel. Here comes Austin Hill driving through. Has, Could he win it again? Does he have enough fuel? Two Georgia drivers out front, Hill and Chandler Smith. We saw Austin Hill saving fuel. He did probably the best job under green in saving fuel. Shane Van Gisbergen is up to third. Ryan Truex is there. Sheldon Creed in the mix. Rally Herbst right there. Once they get the white flag, the next flag will end the race. One lap to go at Atlanta. Austin Hill is out front. This is crazy. Can Austin Hill make it on gas? And can Chandler Smith back up enough to make a run? Two by two behind the 97. Three this race will not be over, I mean, till the very last second, even though with that gap, he's got to get all the way off of turn four with that low fuel. Ryan Truex out of line. Here they come off of turn four. Austin Hill going to do it again. Wow. Unbelievable. Third career victory here at the Atlanta Motor Speedway. How did that happen? That guy just figures out how to win on a super speedway in every unique possible way. Yes. We did not call this one coming, did not see it. And he did a great job at saving enough fuel to win this one. He earned oh, this man. in a lot of ways. They did not hand him this one. Austin Hill goes back to back to begin Good. 2024. Wow. We got to go back and see the restart, guys, because a lot happened here in that last lap, last two laps. We'll take a look. First off, you're going to see a couple guys run out of gas, and we're going to spotlight them here. Austin Hill, all the way back here in the sixth position, is going to go on and win this race as these guys all start running out of fuel. The whole bottom lane just runs out of gas. So you know right up right immediately you're in a good spot. There's Jesse Love running out of gas right here. He led, dominated the race today. How sad is that? What an oh, amazing run he had going. The difference might be, because his teammate won, the fact that he led all those laps couldn't save as much fuel. Yes, leading laps did not help him. And the seas just parted for wow. him right there. Well, he parted him too. Nice move to, to get to the left by Austin Hill on Ryan Trix. Clears him for the lead. 
That was epic. George, Georgia drivers finish one, two. And Austin Hill is the first driver since Tony Stewart in 2008 to win the first two races of a season. He got it done last week at Daytona. He does it today at Atlanta. He's gone back to back. And there's a lot of gas saved because you can tell from here as he burns the rear tires yes. off this bad boy, he had plenty of gas left. Yep. That's the advantage. You know, he ran fifth or sixth almost that entire last run, Joey. Was lifting. We were talking about it. Remember we put the Fox graphic up? That's what you get for running a smart race like he did. Eighth career victory. Three of them right here at his home track. You're right there, Brad. The smartest team, the smartest driver won the race today. Yes. Was not given to him in a lot of ways. He really had nope. to earn it. But he put himself in position, and here we are. In his first two wins here, Austin Hill led over 170 laps. He led two today. But once again, he is holding that checkered flag. You got to feel for Jesse Love. Wow. I mean, just dominated today. Runs out of gas. Jesse Love finished 12. 12. Ugh. What a heartbreaker for him. But I'll tell you what, you keep having races like he's had. Go find your way in victory lane. Sixth Atlanta win for Richard Childress Racing. That matches Joe Gibbs Racing for the best among active teams. Let's hear from the winner, Josh. Austin Hill, now a three-time winner at your home track. You've won the first two races of the season. Right there you said, that's why you don't give up. It was stressful for a lot of drivers at the end, given the fuel situation. How did you save enough to have enough at the end? Yeah, I mean, I just got to thank my guys. Just... Um, Everyone on this number 21, Bennett Chevrolet, you know, we, we all worked through it. Um, I, I was really thinking we were down and out. I'm thinking that two's going to go win. I'm like, hey, if I can't win it, let, the, let my teammate win. And, uh, you know, we're riding there, obviously, in fourth or fifth, whatever it was. And I was saving fuel. You know, Andy was sitting there on, on me and Derek Neely, my spotter, we, were sitting there talking about how much fuel to save. And we came into the restart zone and I'm like sloshing it around and we go through the gears and when I went to shift from I think it was third to fourth I actually stumbled and the 81 hit me really hard and that like woke it back up and I just I had enough fuel to complete the lap but uh I do got to take this moment to uh congratulate Jesse Love my teammate man he ran an awesome race to be a rookie and to lead that many laps uh he should be sitting here in victory lane right now so um you know he just ran out of fuel right I mean you're leading the line so he can't save as much as I can and uh, ultimately, that's kind of what bit him there, unfortunately. But uh, two team did, did a hell of a job. So awesome to win here at my home track again for the third time, like you were saying. Uh, with the Bennett Gold, it's the 50th uh, anniversary of running this scheme all year long. So can't thank Bennett family and companies enough. They're only 15 minutes down, down the road as their uh, headquarters. So uh, man, what a race. I mean, I, I thought we were down and out. I really did. I thought we were just going to go run second or third. And here we are in victory lane, baby. <laughs> Austin Hill, now a three-time winner at Atlanta. It's a second-place run for Chandler Smith today. Chandler, you were the first of the cars as they came across the line that topped off for fuel on that last lap. Did you think the 21 is going to run out? Uh, yeah, a part of me did because I was in that position last year in this in the second race um, with, with those type of engines as well. So a part of me was like, man, I think we actually have a good shot here and they're in a good spot. So. A uh, really good job to my crew chief, Jeff Mendering, on the last second call and pulling us down pit road. That was an amazing call. At first, I was second guessing it, honestly, but uh, that's why I drive the race car and he calls the shots. But uh, really proud of everybody at Joe Gibbs Racing. We had a really fast number 81 quick type products, Toyota GR Supra. Um, it was just as fast as Xfinity Internet, and uh, but we didn't ever really get to showcase that today as we were just all ripping around the top all day. So hopefully we made it somewhat exciting for the fans there at the end and uh, look forward to going to Las Vegas. Thanks, Chandler. Two races in for Chandler Smith at Joe Gibbs Racing. Two top fives. Fifth last week, second today. What a wild finish here in the ATL. And Georgia's own Austin Hill claims victory one more time.